We're continuing our handout, reading from 2-10. The question is, the important polyol, glycerol, 1-2-3 propane triol, here, is a viscous water-soluble liquid with a boiling point of 290. Account for those physical properties. Well, on the uh, the short answer is that glycerol has a high boiling point because, like water, it hydrogen bonds extensively with its three hydroxyl groups. But I'll I want to digress here and give you a review on the importance of hydrogen bonding. I've depicted here two water molecules with. Um, a hydrogen bond. These, dot, these dashed lines depict the hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds give water a high boiling point and similarly raise the boiling point of the other hydroxyl containing substances like alcohols. And the reason for that is because oxygen and hydrogen have, are, have a large enough difference in electronegativities so that the electrons that are in that bond spend more time closer to the oxygen. And the result of that is that the oxygen will have a slightly negative charge, here symbolized by the Greek letter delta minus. The, the hydrogen in the same bond will also have a slight positive charge, symbolized by delta positive. And that small difference in charges creates what's called a dipole. And when, it, when two water molecules are close to each other, the dipoles interact so that one, water, one water molecule will flip over and the two will, uh, will bond. And the hydrogen bond is relatively weak, but it's not negligible. In fact, if you think about the, uh, the structure of water, it's composed of oxygen, which boils at minus 186, and hydrogen, which also boils at sub-zero temperatures close to minus 230 or so. Uh, so why does not water also boil at sub-zero temperatures? And the, result, the reason is because of the hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding causes the boiling point of water to be 100 degrees Celsius in the positive, which is some 200 degrees higher than you would expect it to be. This is explained by the difference in electronegativities of, of the constituent atoms. We recall the electronegativity series. Uh, one way to remember the most important elements in the electronegativity series is to make a mnemonic, make a word out of it, Bunkel, Burke, Huff, Metals. So most electronegative, least the next electronegative. So it helps you make some qualitative observations uh, about uh, bonds if you remember the electronegativity series. Just for example, when you couple hydrogen to chlorine to form hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride, the hydrogen behaves like a positive, positively charged atom. Whereas when you couple it with sodium to get to form sodium hydride, the hydrogen is behaving as though it has a negative charge. We see that the electronegativity of chlorine is much higher than the electronegativity of hydrogen, and the electronegativity of hydrogen in turn is much higher than the electronegativity of sodium. So when you couple chlorine with hydrogen, it's the chlorine that hogs the electrons. When you couple hydrogen with sodium, on the other hand, hydrogen is the one that ends up hogging the electrons. And it has uh, far-reaching implications in organic chemistry and biochemistry. I was joking in the earlier class that uh, the answer to almost every question in biochemistry is hydrogen bonding. The electronegativity of oxygen is 3.44, whereas that of hydrogen is 2.2. When oxygen and hydrogen are in a bond, the electrons are more in the vicinity of oxygen, which gives rise to a bond dipole, a polar covalent molecule. In water, the bond dipole gives rise to a particularly strong dipole-dipole interaction called hydrogen bonding. In question 2-11, we're again asked to make an observation on the effects of a hydrogen bonding. We see two molecules that should have similar boiling points. And the question asks, uh, provide an explanation for the observation that high molecular weight alcohols such as one decanol with a boiling point of 228 have boiling points similar to those of hydrocarbons of related molecular weight. For example, undecane with a boiling point of 196. So they're similar molecular weight, but decanol does have a boiling point that's some 32 degrees higher. Uh, why is that? Hydrogen bonding. Although the effect is a small one. And I compared that to propanol and butane. Propanol has a boiling point of 97, and butane has a boiling point of 0. So these are of similar molecular weight, but the difference is 100 degrees. Why? Because the hydroxyl group makes a bigger part of the molecule than that one. 
So the hydroxyl group is only a small part of these relatively large molecules. So it's only so its hydrogen bonding is only going to, only slightly going to raise the boiling point. Moving on to question 212, we have uh, two alcohols to name. You'll notice that uh, hydroxyl group takes priority over alkyl group, so we start the numbering at uh, the alcohol group, the hydroxyl group, and we continue clockwise. This would be called 2-isopropyl, 5-methyl, cyclohexanol. This molecule has a trivial name, draniol, it's the uh, essence of rose oil, is eight carbons long with a double bond at the second and sixth position, and the methyl group at the third and seventh position. So we would call that 3,7-dimethyl, 2,6-octadiene-1-all. Uh, I'd like to avoid breaking up the, uh, the name of the molecule, and occasionally I'll just write octadiene-all, because if you don't put the one, it's, it's understood that it has to be uh, at the first position because the alcohol has a higher priority than the alkenes in the molecule. But to avoid any ambiguity, they've inserted that one all there. Now question 213 deals with thiol, which are the uh, analogous molecules to alcohols except with sulfur as the, as the heteroatom and not oxygen. So 214, well, sorry, this is actually 213 first. Hydrogen bonding. What do the boiling points of low molecular weight thiols suggest about the importance of hydrogen bonding in those compounds? Uh, what they do show in the text is that the uh, boiling point of methane thiol is only 35, um, is only 6 degrees Celsius, whereas the boiling point of methanol is close to 70, and the boiling point of ethane thiol is 35, whereas the boiling point of ethanol is close to 80. So what it shows is that the hydrogen bonding is um, as a result of sulfur is of a much lower strength than that which we see in when oxygen hydrogen bonds. So hydrogen bonding is not as strong in thiols due to the low electronegativity of sulfur, where sulfur equals 2.58 compared to 2.2 for hydrogen. The sulfur hydrogen bond is polar covalent, but the dipole is small compared to the one in the oxygen hydrogen bond. Section 214, we name three thiols. So the name just like the alcohol except the ending is thiol. We see here four carbons long with a methyl group in the third position, so we call it three methyl butane thiol. This has three carbons in length. There's both an alkene and a thiol in there. This has priority over the alkene, so we start the numbering near the sulfur, two propene thiol. And this one is just regular propane thiol, three carbons with an SH on them. I just took the liberty of adding the, mol the molecule that's used for um, doing perms because it helps break the disulfide bonds in hair. Uh, this chemical, ethane thiol, sometimes also known as ethyl mercaptan, is used to make natural gas stinky so you can detect it because normally natural gas is not detectable by a smell without this contaminant added. And this ethane thiol simply is a, uh, it's like a diol except it's sulfur. The last thing I'd like to mention is just an example of how to name uh, ethers. There are three popular ways of naming ethers. One is uh, to name both alkyl groups on either side of the oxygen atom. So this example would be methyl methyl ether, or you could also say dimethyl ether. The other way is to count the oxygen as though it were a carbon atom. So you'd say one, two, three, and the oxygen is at the second position, and you would add the prefix oxa. So you would call this two oxapropane. And third way is to call it methoxymethane. So it's like a methyl group with an oxygen and a methane. So methoxymethane. Another example is provided here. A molecule that has uh, six carbons in it, but the fifth, at the fifth position you have an oxygen. So uh, we call it a heptane. And at the fifth position, to name the presence of the oxygen, oxygen we say 5-oxaheptane. You could also call it butyl ethyl ether. Here's the butyl group, here's the ethyl group. And you could also name it ethoxybutane.